Hi everyone, thank you for watching this lecture. I'm going to talk about subcubic algorithms for Gumri Hu trees in unweighted graphs. This is joint work with Amir Aboud and Robbie Krautgammer. So uh, in the all pairs max flow problem, we're given a graph G and we need to output for every pair of nodes, the maximum flow that can be shipped between them. Now this problem is easier in undirected graphs. Um, uh, it was shown by Gomery and Hu 60 years ago, uh, uh, how to construct a data structure of linear size that can answer mini domestic cut queries click, uh, quickly. Uh, in fact, uh, their data structure is a tree T on the same set of nodes as the given graph, so that the mean OST cut in the tree is also a mean OST cut in the graph. We can already see that uh, the number of distinct answers is n minus one. Uh, many previous algorithms uh, were designed for this problem, uh, notably for general graphs. Um, uh, the Gomery uh, uh, the Gomery algorithm I just uh, uh, told you about takes n minus one applications of maximum flow, and for unit capacities, few algorithms exist. Uh, uh, there is an, uh, an, algorithm, an algorithm with running time m n, uh, where m is the number of edges and is the number of nodes, and also uh, square term applications of maximum flow. Now. Um, what we show in this uh, paper is that there is a randomized algorithm with, uh, uh, that with high probability constructs a gomery hu tree of a simple graph uh, in time n to the 2.5. Now, this is the first time an algorithm breaks down the n cube uh, uh, barrier for this problem. And also, uh, even if we assume maximum flow can be solved in linear, near linear time, no algorithm was previously known to be subcubic. So before I begin to show you how our algorithm works, let me first uh, briefly describe the Gomer Hu algorithm itself. So um, initially, we have T, which is a single supernode uh, that is associated with the entire node set of the input graph. And the execution maintains that uh, the invariant that T is uh, a tree. Now, at each iteration, uh, two things happen. We can think of two things that happen at the same time, two processes. Uh, the first thing is that um, a supernode is being split into two. So in, in this case, a supernode i is being split into two. And then there is a new edge. We add a new edge between the new uh, supernodes and we reconnect the uh, subtrees that were uh, previously connected uh, to i. And um, again, we pick a supernode that uh, contains more than one node, and we do the same. We partition, we partition it, and uh, we continue until all of the supernodes are singletons, right? And then we have the tree on, uh, that is uh, effectively on the same set of nodes as the given graph. Now, um, the second uh, thing, second process that uh, happened uh, essentially uh, is, is essentially how, how are we partitioning each supernode? <clears throat> so let's say uh, we picked uh, the supernode I. Uh, we can pick uh, any supernode that has more than one node, right? So uh, now we construct an auxiliary graph for I, for the supernode I in G. And the way that we do it is as follows. We look, we look on, the, on each uh, subtree that is adjacent to i, to the supernode i in the tree being constructed. And then we go to g, to the graph, the input graph, and we contract all of the nodes that are in this subtree into a single node, right? We do it for each of the subtrees, and then we get uh, the auxiliary graph for i. In this auxiliary graph, we find the minimum uh, ST cut for some arbitrary pair of nodes ST from I. This uh, minimum cut that we find tells us how to partition I. It also tells us um, how to reconnect the subtrees that were previously connected to I uh, 
whether to uh, it, depending on whether they uh, lie on the left side or on the right side in the in the minimum quantity found. <clears throat> and furthermore, we know also how to uh, which value to put on the new edge uh, between the two parts of uh, I. Okay, now we're ready for uh, our algorithm. <clears throat> So uh, the ideas in algorithm are as follows. So um, first, uh, we pick a random subset of square root n terminals, and we compute their partial tree, the partial tree for uh, this subset for, for S. Now, a partial tree for a subset of nodes S is a partition of the set of nodes of the given graph so that each part, each super node contains exactly uh, one terminal, one node from uh, S, from the subset, and that the minimum cut between uh, two super nodes is also uh, a minimum cut uh, between the corresponding uh, terminals. So uh, the way to find a partial tree for a, sub a subset of terminals is uh, by simply running the gomery hu algorithm but instead of picking nodes arbitrarily, we pick them according uh, to the subset of terminals. So uh, after we did that, we know that uh, at most one supernode will have more than uh, n over two nodes. And so we handle all of the rest recursively. And now I'm going to tell you exactly what we do, how are we going to handle this uh, big supernode. So uh, by the way that we uh, picked uh, the subset of terminals uniformly at random, we have two properties that follow for VI and its terminal uh, P. First, we have a small depth. So if we look on the subtree of the eventual cut equivalent tree uh, that is induced on VI, then uh, the longest path from P to any of the nodes in this subtree cannot be too uh, long. And the reason is that uh, if there is in the uh, eventual cut equivalent tree a long path, then uh, since we pick node uniformly at random, we would pick uh, many nodes along this path. Uh, the second property is that uh, P is a centroid like in the subtree TI. And what it means is that if we look on the tree TI again on the uh, subset of nodes, the i, then uh, the minimum cut between p and u for every u in vi has the side of u uh, intersection vi smaller than half the nodes of vi. Now, if p was this centroid, then it, it, was, it would be correct for all of the nodes u, but it's only a centroid like, so it is correct for most of the nodes u except for maybe a small subset, which uh, we handle easily. OK, so now uh, we know how to handle uh, graphs whose cut equivalent trees have long paths. So we know to handle the long paths. So now the next uh, natural step is to think about uh, graphs whose cut equivalent trees have uh, small depth. So. Uh, Let's think about this example. So in this example, we have uh, three layers, right? We have uh, P, which is the centroid, and then we have uh, L1 and L2. Uh, we have uh, many triplets of nodes. Each triplet has the father, which is connected directly to P, and two children that are uh, in L2. The father is in L1. Now, um, the gomery hu algorithm uh, on this uh, gra graph uh, will, will not really uh, work uh, very well because each time we pick a node from uh, Li, L1, or, or L2, then we're going to get rid of most three nodes from uh, the big super node that we uh, begin with. And so uh, we would need to uh, apply uh, omega n applications of maximum flow in order to uh, 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 finish uh, working on that tree, which is too much for us. So what we do is we use the isolating cuts procedure uh, in order to uh, 
uh, resolve this uh, example. What is this uh, isolating class procedure? So it was um, first discovered uh, in 2020 by Leon Panigrahi in the context of uh, global mean cuts. And it was later rediscovered by us uh, in this paper. Um, what it says is that given a pivot P and the set of terminals C, <clears throat> it is possible to use log n applications of maximum flow <clears throat> in order to return an estimate cut uh, for each terminal, an estimate cut SV for each terminal V, so that if the only terminal in the actual cut between P and V, CV, is V, then our estimate is correct. Now, uh, in order to uh, feel it better, let me uh, uh, show you uh, how it works here in this example. So the blue nodes, let's say they are chosen to be uh, the terminals for the isolating cuts procedure. <clears throat> now in this case, we can already see that the minimum cut between P and X uh, has exactly X uh, as a terminal. And so uh, the isolating cuts procedure will be able to uh, output this cut correctly. Uh, the same goes for W, but not for U, because there are two terminals in the cut between P and U. <clears throat> OK. And uh, now what we do, what we, uh, uh, we do is we uh, uh, pick each node uh, to be uh, a terminal for the isolated cuts procedure <clears throat> with probability one half. <clears throat> And then we repeat it uh, polylog n times. Uh, now each triplet uh, uh, with high probability have at least one of the iteration. In at least one of the iteration iterations uh, has its uh, uh, father uh, chosen to be a terminal, but not any of its children. In that case, we would identify this triplet. And, uh, and essentially, uh, this, is, this is how we uh, resolve this uh, uh, example. So, uh, so now, uh, if, we, if we can think of uh, what we know uh, now, uh, we know that uh, graphs whose cut equivalent trees have uh, small cuts uh, and small depth, we, we also know how to solve them. So uh, now what is left is uh, graphs whose cut equivalent trees have big cuts. Now this is a prime example of that. Uh, in this example, we have uh, two roughly equivalent uh, 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 subsets of nodes in each side. And the minimum cut between CR and CL has uh, uh, size uh, omega n. Uh, let's say we know uh, the node CR, it is the centroid. Now uh, we need to know the node CL. Uh, if we know the node CL, then we can find uh, the, the, the actual uh, cut that we are looking for by simply applying one maximum flow. But for any of the other nodes, a maximum uh, flow procedure will not uh, uh, help us at all because we will only know uh, the leaf, uh, we, we would only know uh, the minimum cut value for uh, the leaf. So um, <clears throat> how are we going to locate CL? Uh, the Gomery algorithm is not going to help us. And also the isolated cuts procedure uh, in, in this case is not going to help because in order for us to be able to pick CL to be a terminal for that procedure, but not any of the other nodes in the side of the cut of CL, uh, we would have to pick each node with probability one over n, and then repeat n times, and then would be uh, too expensive for us. So um, what we do is we use expanded decomposition in order to handle uh, big cuts. Uh, we follow standard definitions. So the volume of a subset of nodes is the sum of the degrees of the nodes in the subset. The conductance of the subset is the number of edges leaving the subset divided by the minimum volume of S and its complement. Finally, the conductance of the graph is the minimum of the conductances of the subsets. So how are we uh, using 
expanded the composition uh, in order to locate CL. <clears throat> so in a pre-processing uh, step, we prepare and expanded the composition of the entire input graph G with, expansion, with an expansion parameter one over square root 10. Now, this number is chosen because uh, we assume that the number of edges is n squared and the cut that we're looking for is omega n, but in different, uh, the, the parameter can be different for different uh, values. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so uh, after we pick this uh, 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 parameter and we have this exp expanded the composition, we know that each component in the composition is a phi expander. And also we know that the total number of edges outside the expanders is n to the three over two. Okay. And we're going to use it uh, in our analysis. Now we observe that there could be three types of expanders, either a small expander, which means it has at most alpha n nodes for some constant, no, constant alpha, small constant, or it's a large expander. But then by the definition of the expanded decomposition, they have some limitations on the total number of high degree nodes from the side of V or the side of P in the cut. So uh, a large variety means it has uh, more than alpha N nodes, but at most square root N nodes of high degree from CV, which is the side of V in the cut. And a large lefty is uh, simil similarly has uh, uh, more than alpha n uh, nodes, but at most square root n uh, high degree nodes from the side of P in the cut. Now, let me tell you how are we going to handle uh, each of those uh, expanders. So for small expanders, we simply query the, maxim uh, the maximum flow between P in each node of high degree in this case, more than four alpha n uh, node in the small expanders. Now we observe that there could be at most square root n nodes of high degree in small expanders. And the reason is that G is simple. And so um, for each node of high degree in a small expander must contribute a big chunk of its degree to the number of edges that is outside of the expanders. We know that this number is n to the three over two. So this is how we get square root 10. Okay, now as far as large expanders, uh, first observe that the, the total number of large expanders is O of one. So I'm just going to tell you how are we going to handle each one of them. Uh, so if uh, we have a large variety, right? Let's consider H1 in this case. So uh, we know that this expander has a lot of nodes, but at most square root n nodes of high degree from the side of V in the cut. In this case, we are going to apply the isolating cuts procedure. Uh, we're going to pick each node from the expander to be a terminal for that procedure with probability one over square root n. And then we're going to repeat square root n times. With high probability in at least one of the iterations, V will be chosen, but not any of the other nodes in each side of the cut. And then we would identify uh, the cut. Finally, if we have a large lefty, which means that uh, the expander has more than alpha n nodes, but at most square root n high degree nodes from the side of P in the cut. And the way that we handle uh, this expander, uh, we can think of uh, H7 in this case and R is the, is, is the uh, side that has the most square root 10 nodes. Um, so the, what we do is uh, we simply query uh, the square root 10 plus one nodes of uh, the highest degrees in the expander. Uh, we simply query the maximum flow uh, between P and them. And it is guaranteed that uh, at some point we will encounter uh, CL, we will encounter P. And the reason is that uh, uh, if we uh, look on uh, this graph, if we look on this uh, tree, then uh, the degree of uh, each leaf uh, exactly equals uh, the value uh, that is on the adjacent edge. And the, deg the degree of uh, CL must be at least uh, 
the value of each of the edges adjacent to it. Okay. Uh, so this is how we handle uh, large expanders. Okay, so uh, putting it all together. So in general, um, we get minimum cut weights through a binary search. Right here, we only handled omega n, but in general, uh, we do binary search, windows, et cetera. Um, furthermore, uh, a few restrictions of uh, generality were introduced here. Uh, first, the capacity, uh, the capacities might not be monotonically decreasing. So the minimum cut between P and V might not be the edge that is adjacent to V. It might be another edge here, which makes it harder to uh, analyze. And so uh, what we do is we use the cut membership tree from a, a previous paper, uh, which is essentially a coarsening of the cut equivalent tree, uh, so that the minimum, uh, so that the nodes that uh, all of the nodes that their minimum, the minimum cut between P and them is the same cut uh, are um, grouped together uh, into a, a single super node. Um, second, uh, the degree of V may not be bigger than all of the nodes inside of the cut, right? If we look on this uh, example, then uh, we can think about a different tree structure where this is not the case. Maybe the group here might not be the biggest. And the way to handle it is by uh, maintaining an estimate for each node u, which is initialized to the degree, and then uh, applying uh, a few iterations, log n iterations uh, of the uh, expander part so that it goes down and down and down until uh, it, it gets to the actual true value. Now, um, in, the, in this case, uh, we can see that uh, the values that are initialized to be the degree, the degrees are correct for all of the leaves and will remain correct. But uh, for CL, it starts with a degree and then it goes down until it gets to the actual uh, um, uh, value that we're looking for. And more generally, uh, the leaves are going to be uh, correct immediately for the tree. And then each time the correctness will uh, expand throughout the tree till it gets to all of the nodes. Now the conclusion. Uh, first, uh, what, uh, the first contribution is that uh, we employ the isolating cuts procedure for finding multiple cuts at once. This was not known before. And second, uh, contrib a second contribution is the non sans use of the expanded decomposition in the context of Gobery Hood trees. And uh, the main open problem is uh, to find uh, a new algorithm or a conditional lower bound or essentially anything for uh, the weighted case. Um, nothing other than the Gomorrah algorithm is known. And uh, as far as our algorithm, um, it is fairly general, except for uh, one place, which is the way that we handle small expanders. Uh, this place uh, actually assumes the graph. Uh, is simple. This is the only place that assumes the graph is simple. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>